Um, I've been doing this for quite a while, and I'm really excited about obviously starting 6-0. and That is something that's extremely special. Uh, I just care so much about these players and the things that they've gone through. And, and it's amazing what uh, people can do when they all stay together and they don't care who gets the credit, and they're going to all drop the E so that we can all go in the same direction. And uh, really, really proud of what this football team's done. So proud of the student body. Wow. And the community getting behind this team. And whew, what a 12th man. What an effect on the game. And how difficult is it? You should get a grin on your face. How difficult is the situation for a young man who's never started a game before to go in there against Otto's Army and really think that he could be able to operate. I'd like to see who that person is because that would be a special someone, there's no doubt. Questions? Coach, 6-0 and for the first time since 1987. That was a year where Syracuse went undefeated. Just what you can say about this family, this Ohana, and why you feel this team is clicking the way that they need to right now. They just stay together. They really do. And you know, as, as guys get hurt and guys go down, the next man just steps up. And it's a, uh, it's a flattering thing to see the way they operate and to see the way they go. And, you know, as someone's told me, there's a lot of goals that are still out there, but there's one goal that's been checked. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see where this family can go as we move down the road. Hey, Coach, congrats on the win. Congrats on Thank being 6-0. Thank I you. saw you at the end of the game by the goalpost, just kind of standing there. You had a, a smile on your face when all the students were rushing the field, and you just seemed like you were kind of taking it in. Can you just tell me what was going through your mind in that moment? I was thinking that the last time when we beat that team that I'm not going to mention that some guy came behind me and was rubbing his hand through my hair. And I don't know if you guys know anything about you know guys with hair, but you don't want any guy rubbing their hand through your hair. And I... And I didn't do anything, but it was really bothering me at the time. If you go back and check the tape, I thought I held it within really well. But I said, you know what? That's never going to happen again. That's, I'm going to make sure that no one ever rubs their hands through my hair like that. Now, I probably had a lot more here the last time that it happened. But uh, you know, that's a true story. But I, I, one of my fondest moments is when I was working at Baylor in the night that uh, – RG3 won the Heisman versus Oklahoma, and uh, everybody just rushed the field. That community, that student body just rushed the field with the win. And uh, I just went to the side as an assistant coach. I just went to the side, and, and as they jumped over the rail, I just sat on the rail and just watched all that, that mayhem happen out there in the middle of the football field. And it's a memory that's burned inside my, my mind that I'll never forget, and I just wanted to have – one of those memories with an orange S behind it, and now I do. So it's really exciting, and uh, thank you for asking and noticing that. Appreciate it. Coach, um, yeah, Aronde has just really had a breakout season this year, kind of your first primary receiver since Todd or Tristan Jack Jackson a few years ago. Uh, what would you say is different or similar for him compared to some of the primary options you've had in the past? Well, first of all, we can get the jinx off him. He normally doesn't drop the ball. That drop, he'll get so mad at me, but that drop that he did, he dropped that ball, and I went, hmm, he'll never drop another one the rest of the game. That's, some people are like, oh, my God. He, no, uh, it was exactly the opposite. I was like, get the ball to this kid. Get it to him a lot because he will never drop that ball again in this game. He'll never drop another ball. Now, please tell me he didn't drop another one. His hand-eye coordination is not average. It's way above average. And uh, every once in a while, there's a happening. You know, that's, that drop was a happening. That's not what he is. He's consistently good, not occasionally great. Came out with the win, and I know that's all that matters at the end of the night, but there's a couple of messier moments, especially in the first half. I'm just curious. Emily, enjoy it. You, Missouri was never like this. You no. tell me they were never 6-0. <laughs> and oh. They just were not. Just sit back and take some of this stuff in. I, I did. I, I'm very happy for you guys. I think it was a great game. But looking at the Schrader interceptions, I mean, what did you see on those? I mean, they came almost like back-to-back -back there. Just what was your vantage point on those? 
Uh, first one, I thought that actually uh, the one that I remember the most is number 10. Did a nice job of undercutting the receiver in the end zone. There's some scrambling going on. And with all the other stuff, I really can't visualize the last one. Can you help me with it? It was the – oh, we got there pinned the on the, the sideline. Yeah, it was the the on their sideline. We got pinned on the sideline. With the receiver got pinned on the sideline. And the guy turned back in and made the catch. That, uh, it, that was a little bit of both sides. But, you know, my whole thing is he threw those two and then yet he comes back and he finds a way to win. And that's what, that's what leaders do. And uh, Garrett Schrader's a leader. And then Tucker's third down rush that came up short. Did you feel like that was over the line or did, were you okay with where it got marked? I marked? can't wait to see that angle because I'm not going to get in trouble, but I can't wait to see that angle. I was right there, and I'm not as young as I used to be, so I'm not going to go out there yet. But I will watch the tape, and I will let you know. Coach, it's been a few years since you stood up in front of the, care, uh, the, the dome crowd at a basketball game to introduce yourself. You when the it. mic went out and I had to scream because the mic went out to everybody and I lost my voice, but I wouldn't, I mean, details are important. I wouldn't remember anything like that. But can you put in perspective the journey, what, what you feel today? You know, to have, to have faith in things to me is a strong and powerful thing. And uh, I'm just glad that, uh, you know, the student body and the community came back and kept, and they believed in us. Now we had to show them something. And I guess that's the New Yorker way. So I, I've been here a while, I get it. But for them to come back and the way they came back and the way they performed today as the 12th man, and hopefully we'll be doing enough uh, in the future that they'll want to come back for the last two games but uh, they were just absolutely amazing. So that's what I think back to. That's what I think back to, and uh, and and again, hopefully, giving fulfilling that promise that I gave at that basketball game a long, long time ago. Thank you for the question. Hey, coach, big big win today, and there in the second half, at this point, Garrett Williams was already on the sideline in sweats, and Mikel came off the field, Deuce came off the field at one point, Leon came off the field. The way that these other guys stepped in, it wasn't just one dude going out there. It was a whole group of them. Can you, can you touch on, on the way those guys that came in and stepped in? Coaches did a fantastic job. Guys were ready to go. I mean, they were on the launching pad, and boom, they'd take off. And it wasn't all perfect out there, but there was a lot of coaching going on between, between the lines. And I, the big thing about coaching is you got to be able to receive it. You know, a lot of times somebody wants to give you something and you want to turn it down. But, uh, you know, grace and forgiveness is all part of it, and you need to be able to receive, you know, your blessings. And uh, those kids were receiving the information. They were receiving the knowledge. I have a quarterback that tells me, I tell him knowledge is power. My quarterback tells me, no, it's not. He says applied knowledge is power. And I go, hmm, I kind of like that. So uh, we're always learning from, uh, from each other, and uh, those young men were learning, from not only from the coaches giving them information, but also the guys that were getting hurt was talking to them in between series, giving them the heads up on stuff that was going to happen next to them. Coach, uh, just to kind of follow up on that, um, I wonder if you had any kind of update on Garrett Williams and um, if you've been able to see him after the game and just how he's doing. Garrett Williams was the last athlete that I saw before I walked up here. He was looking me eye to eye, and I told him that I expect him back lickety split. And he said he'll see what he can do. Coach, I think there was about 42 minutes between touchdowns in the game. What kind of happened throughout that period of time, and, and how can you improve to make sure that streak doesn't happen against Clemson? <laughs> I, can't, I can't tell you it's going to not happen against Clemson, but I can tell you what was going on in those 42 minutes. You ready? You ready? Body blow, body blow, body blow body blow you and I are fighting and you're not throwing any headshots you're not trying to take my chin off there's no uppercuts everything's in the body you ever see Creed 2 Creed 2 when they had to put their foot back in the tire right two guys in the tire and just throwing body blows crushing body blows that's what was going on that game was physical on both sides that defense that's a top three defense in the ACC I don't know if it's one or it's two I'm not saying that 
but it, and I'm putting us in the top three. It's a top three defense in the ACC, and what you saw was two of the top three defenses going. And I, I'm not trying to make Florida State or anybody else mad. I, Clemson has an outstanding defense. They may be the best. But that was big-time defensive football, and sometimes you just got to throw those body punches in there before you get an opportunity for somebody to stick his chin up a little bit too high so you can take it off. How did you make sure you came out on top? How did I make sure? Yeah. I just stayed, stayed the course. There was no guarantee we were going to come out on top. Sometimes you need to just keep punching. Coach, I just uh, just spoke with Caleb, uh, you know, in the back. Uh, he he wasn't even able to quantify, you know, what type of what what this win in this season means to this program. You're somebody that's been here a long time as well. You've had talented teams. Uh, can you speak on how special this season is and why this group of guys is so special? You know, I've been in it. I, this is the third team that I've been a part of that's had the opportunity to be six and zero, and I've been in it for 34 years. It happens basically once a decade. You guys on this is special. You need, you need to, sometimes you need to just stop and smell the roses. This is special. That doesn't mean we're not, you know, it doesn't mean we're going to win another game. But if you go back and just find out how many teams have gone 6 and 0 and uh, regardless of the opponents, it's it's not normal. Okay? It's not normal. It's way way above average. Coach in the second half, NC State had two drives that compiled like 20 minutes and it seemed like their offense was on the field nonstop. What did your defense do, and what has your defense done all season to be so stout in the red zone and get them off the field and hold them to three points? Well, again, those, it was almost like they were playing an Army-Navy ball against us, and I'm not trying to be funny. I'm, you know, seriously, it was, uh, you know, those were long drives, and I looked at the play count, and we had 55 plays in a total game. I can remember games in this stadium with me as the head coach where we had 55 plays at halftime. I want to say that. Now, that if that's not a true statement, it's happened before. It's happened in other places I've been at. 55 plays in a game, and I want to say that they had 66. So you guys should have a lot of time to enjoy the weather and everything. This game happened really, really quickly, and that normally means there's a lot of running plays, and the clock is continuously running, and that's what you had out there, a very, very physical contest between – two really good defenses and two really good teams trying to find a way to win. Last question, maybe if you want to rest the play. <laughs> well, um, Coach, six. <laughs> well, um, but uh, Coach, six and oh, bowl eligible. Um, and with basketball season coming around right around the corner, how important is it to have two teams playing inside the dome along with one another when it gets to the point where both teams are playing, whether it's on the hardwood or the gridiron, basketball right around the corner. I don't well. know if Pete Salas people like that. You know, this means that they're going to get some overtime change in the course around. But I think the world of Coach Beheim. I can't wait to see that basketball team. I mean, he's, again, I think he's a fantastic coach, maybe even a better person. I enjoy my time around him. And uh, if he says they're going to make the ACC tournament, I'm not betting against Coach Beheim. No way in no way in heck. And I think it's exciting for the community. I think it's exciting for the student body. I think we've got enough tickets to go around and enough people in this town that we can fill up the basketball arena and the football stadium. I mean the football arena at the exact same time, whether it's football or basketball. So. I'm excited for those guys to get start, but I just want to make sure we keep going 1-0 and so that we can finish the right way on the football field. Enough after a day like today where all the tickets were sold out? Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you.